Jesse V. And as you can tell by the title of today's video, we're going to be talking about a game called Red Door, Yellow Door. Now, I have briefly talked about this game in another video, probably like two or three years ago, but I've never made a dedicated video for it. And I've noticed that you guys have been requesting me to do a whole entire detailed video on this game for a very long time. And I think the reason why I've been avoiding it is because honestly, this game kind of scares me more than most games do. I feel like any sort of games that have to do with your mind are just freaky. But before we get started, if you have not seen my last video, I made a very exciting announcement. I have come out with my own version of an ornament for Christmas. I've also come out with a Christmas stocking. So in case you have not seen, I will briefly show you one more time. The first thing is this iridescent unicorn ornament. This is what it looks like up close. It's so pretty and every time you turn it, there's like a different color. And then I also have this mermaid stocking. This is what it looks like up close. It's all sparkly. She has like gold hair and the actual fabric has these little sparkles in it. So these are obviously limited edition for Christmas. So once they're gone, they're gone. But I wanted to release some earlier so you guys get them in time for Christmas. So if you would like one of those things, I have linked them down below in the description. So without further ado, even though I feel like I've been avoiding talking about this, let's discuss Red Door, Yellow Door. Red Door, Yellow Door is a scary paranormal game to play at sleepovers. Now this ritual slash game also has a couple other names. People also call it Black Door, White Door or Doors of the Mind. Basically, you're having a sleepover with your friends and you'll choose one of your friends to be your guide while playing this game. So obviously to play this game, you will need at least two people. So the person you choose to be your guide will basically put you into a trance and will lead you through the doors of your mind. I know it sounds crazy. So let's go into how you set up for this game. Basically, your guide will sit on the floor with their legs crossed. They'll have a pillow on their lap and you'll lie in front of them on the ground with your head on the pillow that's on their lap. Does that make sense? So you're like lying in front of them. You're gonna close your eyes and you're gonna hold your hands up in the air like you just don't care. <laughs> now your guide is gonna start massaging your temples with their fingers while they say red door, yellow door, any other color door, red door, yellow door any other color door. And they're gonna keep saying this over and over again. Then you're gonna start feeling yourself slipping into a trance. So you have to almost let yourself start falling asleep as you're listening to your guide say this. Once you slip into your trance, you will start to see rooms or doors in front of you. Once you see these doors, you're gonna lower down your arms and this way your guide knows that you're finally in your trance and the game will begin. The guide asks you questions, getting you to describe your surroundings and prompting you to open open doors. I feel like I haven't sneezed in a video in so long. Oh my goodness. So here is some of the questions that your guide might ask you while you're around all of these crazy doors. They might say, are you in a room? Describe this room. What color are the doors? How do you feel about the purple door? Open the purple door and go through. So you have to have like proper communication with your guide. Now, this is where the game gets very creepy because there's tons of rules and advice about what you should do while you're in the doors of your mind. So basically while you're in your trance, you might might see a long hallway with doors all down the side. You might be in a house with a bunch of colorful doors. You might be in the middle of a field with just like one door in front of you. It all depends on how your mind portrays this other world with doors. Now, one of the rules say that if you ever come across another person in this world, you should never interact with them because they might turn out to be evil or they might try and trick you. There was this one experience someone had where they were being followed by someone they knew in real life. So when they saw them, they just waved at them because they recognized them and this other person waved back. But instantly they had this horrible feeling that the person they were waving at wasn't really who they knew. It was almost like something was trying to disguise themselves as someone they knew. So if you see anyone while playing this game, just avoid them. Don't talk to them, don't look at them. Pretend you don't think they're there. If you find yourself in a room full of clocks, you have to leave immediately because clocks clocks can trap you. So people say that if you walk into a room that only has like one clock on the wall, you're totally fine. But if more and more start appearing, or if you literally walk into a room with floor to ceiling clocks everywhere, you need to get out of that room immediately and do not go back in. One person said this happened to them while playing this game and it was almost like the clock started to hypnotize them and they ended up staring at the wall for hours and hours. And their friends were even unable to wake them up, which is terrifying. Another 
rule says that you can go anywhere you want, but it's better to go up than down. So basically, if you ever see a staircase while you're in this other trance world, it's better to choose a staircase that's going up than a staircase that's going down. A lot of people who have played this game have gone down staircases, and they say they get this very, very eerie feeling because sometimes the staircases don't stop, and it's like you're going down endless staircases forever and ever, and eventually you get like lost in your mind. I read this other experience about someone who went down over 80 staircases going down. And once they got to the very bottom, they encountered this very creepy figure that had the face of their mother, but it had two heads and it was crawling on all fours, like going after them. So they had to go back all the way up through these 80 staircases while this creepy creature was chasing them that had the face of their mother. That is terrifying. I would never want to go through that or experience that. So yeah, if you ever encounter stairs, just go up. Just go up. The next rule of advice says that light things and light colors tend to be better than dark things and dark colors. So many people have said that they have better experiences going through lightly colored doors, but it's different for everybody. So maybe if you see a dark purple door, there might be something bad in there. But if you go through like a light green door, there's something nice in there. But that's not always the case. One person went through a light pink door only to find themselves endlessly falling into a black abyss. So yeah, I guess light Light isn't always good. It really depends. The next rule says that if you become trapped in a room, you have to try and wake up or you will be trapped in a trance forever, which is everybody's worst fear. So trapped in a room basically means there's no windows around, there's no trap doors in the floor for you to escape, there's literally no way for you to get out. It's like you just walk into like a plain room and walls. Like maybe the door got blocked by something or it disappeared the second you entered the room. It says that in this case you will need to communicate with your guide to help you with waking up because sometimes it's very hard to do on your own so your guide will have to like shake you awake and it says sometimes it's easy but other times it's harder than you think. Oh. Next it says they say that if you die in the game you also die in real life. Um no thank you. Now I was reading online that most people have been saying that this rule is just there for entertainment factor just to make you more scared while playing the game but I wasn't able to find any sources online that have said that people have died while playing this game. I literally just kicked my camera. I'm not into this video. So obviously if people died while playing this game, I would not be making a video about it because I would never want to encourage anybody to do something that like would be harmful. It's just a game where you explore your mind and the worst thing that could happen is something in the game scares you so much that it's hard for you to forget about it when you wake up. Or maybe you just get trapped in your mind forever, but that probably won't happen. The next creepy thing it says is that if you encounter a man in a suit who makes you feel uneasy, you should end the game immediately. Now, a lot of people have encountered this creepy man in the suit while playing this game. Some people describe him as wearing a widely brimmed hat. Some people say he's wearing a dark purple suit. And he basically just watches people as they walk through the rooms and the hallways, not really saying anything, just making them feel very uneasy. Other people have said they get into a trance just by looking at him. Other people have said they've seen a woman in a Victorian dress that essentially does the exact same thing. So kind of like what I said before, if you see anybody, just avoid them. Don't look at them. Don't pay attention to them. Just walk away. And lastly, it says, in an emergency, if you are unable to wake up, it may be necessary for the guide to shake you roughly until you awaken. So like I said before, sometimes you need help waking up from this game. So you have to be like shaken really hard and uncontrollably. And I guess that's why you always play this game with people around you in case like a crazy emergency happens and you have to wake up. But yeah, those are all of the creepy advice and facts that I could find. I definitely went a little bit more in depth in this full video about the game but still if I missed anything really interesting definitely comment it down below and I just want to say before I close this video I don't think that this game is as legit as people think it is I think that if I close my eyes and imagine like doors and hallways and stuff it would be really really cool and I feel like I could do it but I don't think you could ever get trapped in your mind the way that people say you can I could be wrong but I just I just can't see that happening because I feel like I'm a very imaginative and creative person. So if I was going to get trapped in my mind, I would have been trapped a long time ago because that's how much I like think creatively. And like I feel like you essentially do the same thing when you dream and no one gets trapped in their dreams. You know what I mean? But who knows? Who knows? I just thought this game was so interesting to talk about and you guys have been really wanting me to do a video on this for quite a while. So yeah, if I missed any cool things, comment them down below. And don't forget if you would like a new Christmas ornament or a Christmas stocking, I've linked that down below as well. But I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!